Okay, our next presenter is Shelly Weard. Uh, her presentation is called Smoking Native, Why, you, Why Can't You Quit? Now, Shelly says she's passionate about healthy living and coffee, and I suppose, depending on which study you've just read, those things might go together or they might go against one another. She says that she cannot live without her girls, Kayla, Aubrey, and Harper. She can't live without books, and she can't live without podcasts. Podcasts, <laughs> not podcasts. Her, that, that would be interesting. Her guilty pleasure is chocolate almonds, and one word that sums Shelly up is inspiring. So please welcome the inspiring Shelly. My name is Shelly Weert, and I'm the founder of Women Warriors, a holistic health and active lifestyle program that provides free fitness classes and nutrition education to women and children in Lloydminster with an Indigenous focus. I'm a former 10-year smoker, and I am passionate about helping smokers quit. At the beginning of every Eight Weeks to Healthy Living program, I offer a smoking cessation seminar. I focus on my own addiction and how I quit, and I also have a pharmacist that explains the different cessation aids to help smokers find the best method possible for them to quit. My family is Métis and lives in Yellowknife. At one point in time, my dad and all of his siblings smoked. They were from a generation that accepted and promoted smoking as part of daily life. A raw fact is that smoking prevalence for Indigenous Canadians is almost triple that of non-Indigenous Canadians. I want to share with you the five different types of smokers. The first is the die-hard. My uncle states that he started smoking when he was 12 years old and firefighting in Fort Smith. The federal government gave him free tobacco as part of his rations, and so he felt pressured to start smoking with the boys when he was young. His 50-year addiction, I imagine his lungs look like this on the screen, has led to very serious health complications for him. He's tried to sm quit smoking plenty of times in the past, and last spring he actually quit for seven weeks. But his story is one of long-term smokers. They start again after they've quit for a period of time. The next is the closet smoker. They hide their smoking from their friends, family, spouses. They find creative excuses to be alone, and they go to great lengths to rid themselves of the smell. What's raw about closet smoking is that it damages not only your health, but also your relationships. Closet smokers are the di most difficult smokers to help quit because they're hiding their addiction from their loved ones, and they themselves are in a state of denial. The first thing you have to do with closet smokers is help them get over the shame of smoking, and then deal with the nicotine dependency. The third type of smoker is the mentally ill. My uncle struggles from schizophrenia, and nicotine has been known to help alleviate some of the symptoms and provide relief from the side effects of antipsychotic medications. According to the Center for Disease Control, adults with mental illness are 70% more likely to smoke. The fourth smoker is my friend Chris. I call him the last vice smoker. His mentality as to why he smokes is he doesn't drink and he doesn't gamble. He can't quit everything. <laughs> he represents the raw data that 57% of First Nation adults on reserve or in northern First Nation communities smoke daily or occasionally. Finally, it's only fair to turn the lens on myself. I am the party smoker. When I used to drink, which was often in my 20s, I had a rye and coke in one hand and a cigarette in the other. Smoking and drinking go hand in hand because alcohol is a depressant and nicotine is a stimulant. The raw truth about my addiction to both cigarettes and alcohol is that it stemmed from childhood trauma. I realized this link when I read Dr. Gabor Mate's book, In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts. For many addicts, their destructive behaviors like smoking or drinking are coping mechanisms and used for stress relief and or to numb themselves. I believe smoking is prevalent amongst Indigenous people because it's a coping mechanism for the intergenerational trauma suffered from residential school and their loss of culture, community, and identity. 
pre-contact, the Inuit didn't smoke at all and they did not use traditional tobacco in ceremonies. And now 58% of Inuit in the North smoke. Being effective in my smoking cessation seminars means understanding intergenerational trauma and Indigenous culture. An important cultural consideration is that tobacco is sacred and one of the four medicines given to Native people from the Creator. It is used in all kinds of ceremonies and used very often for offerings. So it's good protocol to offer tobacco anytime you seek advice from an elder or you ask for assistance from a community member. For one of my warriors in my program, it's been difficult to quit smoking because her husband is a drummer and she is constantly offered, he is constantly offered tobacco, so she has a supply of cigarettes all the time. The second cultural consideration is the importance and frequent use of traditional tobacco. It is used to pray, give thanks to the Creator and Mother Earth, communicate with the spirits, purify the mind and heal the body. Different First Nations have different uses for tobacco and different ceremonies surrounding it. Intergenerational trauma may have resulted in a loss of these teachings where elders are unwell, uh, not mentally and physically healthy. The elders are the knowledge keepers of the community and are important role models for younger generations. So if they smoke, it's more likely that the young people in the community will smoke. The social stigma associated with smoking is not as harsh in Indigenous communities. Let's Go for a Smoke is an important social networking opportunity. I was at the Indigenous Women's Traditional Gathering in Cold Lake and I felt like I was missing out on a lot of opportunities to connect with women because I didn't smoke. In First Nation communities, you also need to understand lateral violence and that's expressed in outward jealousy or envy of others and through bullying, backstabbing or gossiping. It makes it difficult, difficult to quit. Community members may undermine your quit attempts by offering you cigarettes or they may plant seeds of doubt in your mind that you can even quit. The most raw question you can ask a smoker is, why can't you quit? The universal truth about smokers is that they hate smoking. They want to rid themselves of their smoking prison. They want freedom from their addiction. They want to quit. The answer to helping smokers quit is inherent in Indigenous culture. They acknowledge the interconnectedness of everything and everyone. Overcoming addiction needs to be shifted from placing the onus on the individual to a community-oriented and focused experience. Hence, the creation of Women Warriors, a community that understands structural factors that lead to smoking and is culturally relevant.